Here we go with the rare volcanic island, right? Oh, hey, there we go. Ancestral recall. Boom! Yeah! <laughs> Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most expensive Magic the Gathering cards. And Beckett uses a 0.5 scale, so 9.5 is gem mint. There is a higher grade called Pristine, which is a 10, which is their elite of elite cards. That's right, we'll be looking at the priciest cards found throughout the Magic the Gathering trading card game. Do you have any of these gems? Go ahead and gloat in those comments below. We do have, as I was saying, a quite heavily played Bazaar of Baghdad, in my opinion. Now, I still know sometimes grading on older cards are a little bit more lenient because they're so old. Personally, I would value this at heavy play. Number 10, Gaius Cradle. Please be a nice hit. Please be a nice hit. Oh, boy. Oh, shut up! Oh, my God, bro! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Introduced throughout the 1998 Urza Saga set, Gaius Cradle is an incredibly useful card for any player running a green mana deck. The legendary land allows the player to tap it and add one forest for each of their creatures. Considering green's tendency to produce creatures and tokens quickly, that could result in a ridiculous amount of mana. The card hasn't been reprinted through other sets, so it usually costs a steep price. The regular version can go from anywhere between $700 and $1,200 depending on condition, although the rarer Judge Gift program version can reach up to $2,000. It is quite expensive, so maybe it is better to just have a proxy. Number 9. Time Vault Now, why is Time Vault the most controversial card for me? Is because of this wording right here. For two colorless mana, this artifact allows its user to tap it and take an additional turn. While you must skip one turn to untap it, it's a highly useful card when it comes to strategizing and pulling off big moves. It was only printed in three sets, all of which were released in 1993. The unlimited version costs the least, ranging from $1,000 to $1,200, but the versions found in the alpha or beta sets, consisting of the first Magic the Gathering cards ever produced, can go for much more. Depending on condition, these can cost anywhere from $1,300 to $7,000. You can do that with Twiddle, and it untaps, and you don't have to skip a turn, making Time Vault very, very powerful, equally to the Black Lotus. Number 8, Time Walk. Alright, what will the rare be? Oh, it's a Time Walk! Blue spell cards tend to be some of the most troublesome to deal with as they usually revolve around countering or causing other generally annoying shenanigans. This has always been the case as evidenced by this sorcery card that only costs one colorless and one blue mana. For that low cost, a player could give themselves an extra turn with no drawbacks. Since it's overpowered, it was only printed within the first three sets of the game. The Unlimited Edition goes for as low as $2,500. The Alpha version, on the other hand, is valued between $15,000 and $26,000, depending on condition. Wow. Time Walk, that's pretty awesome. Number 7, Bazaar of Baghdad. We do have, as I was saying, a quite heavily played Bazaar of Baghdad, in my opinion. Released in December of 1993, Arabian Nights was the first ever expansion for Magic the Gathering. One of the most expensive cards today from that set is the land card, Bazaar of Baghdad. Tapping it allows the user to search their deck for any two cards and then discard three. It's very useful when trying to speed up your plans and hasn't been reprinted since. It can sell anywhere between $2,000 and $2,500 these days. Of course, if it's graded, that's an entirely different situation. Near Mint copies on eBay currently sell for around $20,000. Number 6, Mishra's Workshop. Today, we have a very, very special card. The BGS-10 Pristine Mishra's Workshop and the only one in the world. Magic the Gathering's second ever expansion was released in March of 1994, though the only card worth more than a few hundred dollars now is Mishra's Workshop. Another land card, it lets the player tap it to receive three colorless mana to their pool. 
but it can only be used to summon artifacts. In an artifact-centric deck, it could spell disaster for your opponents. Since it hasn't been reprinted, Mishra's Workshop can go for around $4,400 ungraded. However, if you find a near-mint version graded, it can cost you around $13,000. I'm not a huge player, but I can tell you that this is one of the most prized cards um, in the game. Number five, Ancestral Recall. Oh, hey, there we go, Ancestral Recall. Boom! Yeah! <laughs> Similar to Time Walk, Ancestral Recall is part of the Power Nine, nine cards from the original three sets that are broken past the point of being overpowered. For just a single blue mana, Ancestral Recall would allow the user to draw three cards or force an opponent to. Obviously, the mana cost does not match up at all with what the card could do. The version from the Unlimited set currently peaks at around $5,000, but if you've got yourself an original printing, you're sitting on upwards of $20,000 worth of colorful paper. And also a fresh from the pack Ancestral Recall. Holy moly. Number four, Library of Alexandria. It's coming out of the binder. It's coming out, folks. Don't worry about that. Another land card from the Arabian Nights expansion, Library of Alexandria lets the player tap it to gain one colorless mana. Or you can draw a card from your library, but only if you're currently holding exactly seven cards. If played correctly, the library could be used as a way to make it through your deck much faster, making the most of your draw step. It's currently the most expensive card from the expansion, valued close to $8,000 if in near mint condition. While that's not as pricey as the peaks of other cards on this list, the fact that it surpasses the unlimited edition versions of cards found in the Power 9 is still impressive. Library of Alexandria used to be such a good card. Folks used to say it's it's number one. In some control decks, it was probably the best card you could you could draw. Number three, Time Twister. And that was our first P9 card that we opened out of a booster. The last blue spell in the famous Power 9, but certainly not the least, is Time Twister. For two colorless mana and one blue mana, Time Twister would give you a fresh start by having you shuffle your hand and graveyard into your deck and then draw seven new cards. But it could also be detrimental to your opponents as they would have to do the exact same. The Unlimited Edition can fetch you around $7,500 to $10,000. The beta printing can range from $8,000 to $15,000. But the Alpha version is obviously the priciest, reaching up to $16,000 or $20,000 if graded. Number 2. Mox Cards People have been asking about the Mox Ruby. So I figured I'd just go ahead and put it up, and here it is. Five of the Power 9 cards are Mana Rocks, artifacts that players can tap to add certain mana to their pool. But the reason these artifacts were considered so powerful is that they cost absolutely no mana to cast them. Free mana with no downside is pretty overpowered, which is why they've been banned from most competitions. Because there are five of them, and because each of them were printed three times, their value have quite the range. But even at their cheapest, these cards go for thousands of dollars. A near mint graded alpha version of Mox Ruby, which lets the player add one red mana, is currently on eBay for $47,000. So, if you were looking for the Mox Ruby, here it is. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure to go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Black Lotus and there you have it, folks. 9.5 overall grade. Black Lotus is the holy grail of all Magic the Gathering cards and the most powerful of the Power 9. The artifact costs zero mana to cast, but unlike the Mox cards, it can be tapped to add three mana of whatever color you choose into your mana pool. That is clearly an unfair advantage, and it's been banned from many competitions like the Mox cards. But if you ever wanted to pick up one, you'd be paying a fortune. The unlimited edition printing, the least expensive, is still valued around $22,000. But a near mint graded alpha vision sold in 2019 for a whopping $166,000. If you wanted a near-mint autographed version, you're looking at 500k. 
It's hard to ever see a card selling for more than Post Malone's purchase of a signed Black Lotus, though, as the American rapper put down a whopping $800,000 for the card. Values of cards go up and down, but Black Lotus will always be the king. I did it! Holy mackerel! It's right there! It's an Alpha Lotus! Holy <laughs> Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.